I waded through a moron after moron, untruths and half-truths shouted from the pulpit, and frenzy building and building into a point brink of ecstasy and finally fizzling down. Zane and his wife and child finally started away. I didn't know I was following them. There were so many people, they didn't notice me. I was trying. I didn't decide to follow them. I was just kind of fixated. So I walked about 20 feet behind them until they came to the parking garage. Then I followed them into the garage, just sort of rolling on autopilot. It wasn't until I'd already kind of ducked behind a Chevy Equinox that I realized that I was ducking behind an Equinox spying on them, instinct, and my journalism training had taken over. But uh, what I saw was just ridiculous. Kindaw threw Megaphone Betty against their car. I kid you not, a Cadillac XRZ360 gold sport something or other, and shoved his tongue down her throat. I wasn't jealous. Her ugly ideas made her unattractive. That's a lie. I hated him for his gorgeous wife. I hated the guiltless world that they lived in, and I hated their happy, stable existence. They did not deserve it. They did not deserve it. They did not. This was illustrated by the baby that they left in their space stroller sitting in the middle of the garage. His hand went up her shirt, and they fell into the back seat of the Cadillac XR whatever, romantic passion whatever, but don't leave your kid just sitting there. What were my feet doing? Hmm, I had no idea. But they were walking boldly to the stroller, and before I knew it, I had taken the baby. I was strolling with the space stroller through the garage, calmly, quietly. Lots of political revolutionaries spent time in jail. Nelson Mandela, you know, and others. I'm sure anyway, I kept looking back as I pushed the stroller away, expecting the parents to, you know, say something, anything, but they just kept making out. They were trying, they, they were trying to get rid of this kid. They were probably laughing. They were so in love with freedom. They were probably celebrating their freedom with the responsibilities of their infant. As I made my way past the business and residences of downtown, making my way to the near west side, nobody said anything. There were no police sirens, no furious parents in cars, nothing. The baby didn't even cry, just kind of chilled in the stroller, showing absolutely nil signs of missing the biological parents. Stopped by the CVS and got some, you know, baby supplies, formula, diapers, a couple cheap toys. It was easier than you'd believe. On the news that night. I expected something about the abduction. Nothing. I expected a riot squad out my window. Nothing. I got out the old guitar and I played him a song and he went right to sleep for the night. No muss, no fuss. The happiest little dude you'd ever meet. I decided to name him Moses. Because I always liked that name. That night I rehearsed my speech. Everything I would say to the police, to the media, to my family when they found out that I was in jail. But I woke up in the morning and fed Moses. No police. No news stories. 